Greetings, investigators! If you have a moment between defeating the machinations of the Great Old Ones, we'd be happy to fill you in on the latest board game from Fantasy Flight Games. FFG releases board games all the time, so why should you look up from your cardboard crack long enough to care? Well, those insidious fellows put this little logo on the front and called it an Arkham Files game. Look, it even appears in the Arkham Files section of the website. But it may be very different from what you are playing at the moment. First up, this didn't evolve from a previous Arkham Files product, but is instead a reworking of FFG's now out of production Battlestar Galactica game. It still is highly acclaimed, and so you may find potential new players wanting to try this version out. Gasp Shock Horror! This is the first Arkham Files game that isn't fully cooperative. Look, no one even remembers that, so shove off. It has the dreaded word semi-cooperative on the back, meaning one or more of the players at your table will be a traitor and working with the Great Old Ones to stop you succeeding. The higher your player count, the more backstabbers you will probably have. There are rules for minimising the amount or type of turncoats, but this player versus player is the beating heart of the game. Yes, there is plenty of flavour text to read, but this isn't a narrative adventure. It is more of a social deduction game where you have to work out who is on your side and minimise the influence of anyone who isn't. Or if you are an enemy within, then you need to sabotage as much as you can without being discovered. Or wait for the right opportunity to reveal yourself for maximum impact. Whilst the modularity of tiles and variable locations is all the rage at the moment, this game has a fixed board. With only one storyline, you don't need to shake things up. The replayability comes from the different combinations of the characters chosen, who turns out to be a traitor, and how good the players are at real-life deception and social deduction. Arkham Files games have always been playable solo, so those shy, reclusive nerds can play with themselves in their mom's basement to their heart's content. Often using multiple characters to give themselves the illusion they have actual friends. Although if you start putting on funny accents for the different people, then maybe change your therapist. Even that previous keep your hidden information a secret from your fellow players game did have rules for solo mode, thus defeating one of the fundamental aspects of the play experience. But there is definitely no solo mode here, no AI deck, or even a way to play without a minimum of three real-life humans. And we don't see them retrofitting anything like that either. Although anything is possible with FFG, right? This certainly has the longest playtime for a single game out of the box. Yes, we have all experienced time dragging as we wait for our turn to come round in an 8-player Eldritch Horror. But, as a key aspect of this game is collaboratively making decisions rather than resolving your own encounter card alone, this social game can certainly keep you talking. If you like the rapid pace of a mini-adventure as opposed to having your whole afternoon sucked away into a time black hole, then consider yourself warned. With each new Arkham Files game, it is cool to see the latest iteration of your favourite characters and how they evolve, particularly with new, flashier artwork. Jenny or Preston would be the perfect pair to take on a luxury cruise, right? Wrong! There are ten brand new, never seen before characters whose connection to the existing pool is certainly tenuous at best. And to make them even less compatible, this game is set more than a decade prior to your regular Arkham Files timeline. Although, when they run out of investigators in the current product, let's see if some offspring or siblings of these ocean-going adventurers mysteriously appear. What are you talking about? There is a dog and a shotgun, and an Elder Sign amulet, plus whatever the 1913 equivalent of dynamite was. And tomes! Lots of lovely forbidden lore. More than Daisy got in her core box, know what I'm saying? Don't forget the definitive proof for every Arkham Files game. A set of fine clothes. And do you see the skill icon on the bottom? That's right, the familiar five skills that appear in all your beloved Arkham Horror games, well, all the good ones anyway, are here. Although you don't use them to roll dice, just draw skill cards, which you pull with the other players to solve a crisis. Whoops, sorry, no time, gotta move along. 
As we all know, the Arkham Files is a universe best kept flat. The monsters, the locations, and preferably the investigators have no business occupying more than two dimensions. Heck, even standing them upright is considered by many to be a form of heresy. Or an opportunity for add-on sales. But this game comes with miniatures, a whole third dimension of cosmic horror with spiky bits just begging to be trodden on. Big ones, slightly less big ones, and small ones, lots of small ones. No need to panic, as their thematic green coloration means you won't feel obligated to paint them. And no need to feel guilty that some child labourer in a sweatshop was forced to paint them for you. As an Arkham veteran, you will be familiar with rolling lots of dice, or drawing weird shaped symbols, or rolling dice with weird shaped symbols. But the joy or headache of mixing and maximising your hand slots and footwear slots to accumulate escalating static bonuses whilst not gone, is certainly minimised. Roll the single eight-sided die. If the result is four or more, you win. There is no evasion. There is no engaging. Plus, definitely no becoming delayed. And if a deep one attacks you, roll the single eight-sided die. If the result is six or more, you go straight to sick bay. Do not pass go. Do not draw your usual five cards. But no one gets eliminated and chooses a new character. And no one risks losing their balls or any other items they accumulated. It's all very Euro game. You do get the gist that this is a social deduction game, right? And the whole point were the friends you alienated and ultimately lost along the way. Yes, we get the fact that the only reason you buy these games is so you can pay way more than its value for unique mastercrafted gold-plated accessories. That's obviously a given. But look, remember how Final Hour only had health tokens and no one ever gave that game a bad review? It's not like anyone made the definitive list of the mechanics every Arkham Files game must have based on an exhausting social media survey, is it? You'd have to be crazy to do that. Only joking, this game does indeed have sanity. So you can splurge on those gilded brain tokens after all. In fact, we found one of the best sentences we have ever read in a rule book. which we definitely want to see on a t-shirt from the new Arkham Horror merch store. Now, where did we see that sanity? No, 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 no. Ah, right, the heartfelt tragedy of mental illness is now a handy dial for your convenience. You get one abstracted group meter for the whole ship, along with food, fuel and passengers. Talk about depersonalization. That's right, no more clues and doom either. Think of all the third-party token manufacturers that won't be able to feed their tiny Tims this Christmas. Arkham Files games have so much art that it fills two hardback books. It is fantastic to see just which game will be the one to debut the new commissions. And holy moly, this game must be the first to feature entirely new art everywhere. From the characters, to the locations, to the items. We scoured as much of Innsmouth as we could, and we didn't see anything recycled. It's amazing! No, why would you ask? Who doesn't like dressing up as a waitress in the daytime, and becoming a thousand-year-old sorceress to fight cultists on the mean streets of Arkham at night? There is an entire role dedicated to spellcasting, where you get given a magic book and two free spells every turn, which are all the old classics that you know and love, and maybe some weird nonsense. Well, yes, providing they can access lore cards. These are two spells. Look, this one says shriveling on. In fact, most of them say shriveling on. Okay, it's just another abstraction. All right, all right, it's a fair cop. As an Arkham board gamer, you will be used to drawing bland looking cards, reading flavour text and then chucking them away without a thought, while the cards that stay in play all look super pretty. If you come from the card game background, you will be used to the cards you draw, read and chuck away all having pretty pictures on, as well as the cards that stay in play. We were initially freaked out when the preview appeared, but from actually owning the game it doesn't make that much difference, as you should be staring at the poker faces of your fellow players, looking for tells, rather than staring at the cards in your hand. Plus, where would you put a picture on a card with this much text on it? Or this much? So, in summary, this is a social deduction game first, and a tangentially connected Arkham Horror Files Universe product second. 
If you are looking to recreate more of the same Lovecraftian narrative, then just buy another expansion for your existing game. If you want to step away from your existing, accumulate as many bonuses to make the numbers as large as possible experience, maybe with a different playgroup, then definitely look into this. Maybe by checking out some more of our videos about this game. Thanks for watching everyone, and we will see you next time.